There you are. Hello, my dear friend. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good day. Whatever, wherever you are, we were watching and connecting. And if you are watching as a replay, so this stream is going to be about RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy. Bogdana and myself, we have been together on an online course which was developed and uh, created by Marissa Peer, the wonderful, amazing, incredible Marissa Peer, who I'm going to have as a guest also on this channel on Wednesday already, 26th of January, 8 p.m. Uh, European time, German time, CET, or 11 a.m. PST, California time. So please join. Don't, don't forget that. And today this is going to be a little warm-up before that stream so that you know uh, from first have information from people who have experienced RTT as students, what it's like to be an RTT therapist, what it's like to be a client of RTT, Rapid Transformational Therapy. Bogdan and me are going to share this our experience with you. We have been reflective partners. It means we have um, we have given each other a session. This yeah. is part of the course, which is wonderful. So, Bogdana, please just say a few words about yourself. And um, Bogdana is going to share her story, her experience, and I'm going to share mine. And this is going to be a wonderful conversation. Well, hi, Eric. Hi, everybody. Um, hello to everybody. Um, I'm really pleased to be um, this, in this moment with you, Eric, and speak about our RTT journey. It was really, as the name say, said, a rapid transformation um, when we made a reflective practice together. I really was on the point, what is my last topic? What is my last issue? And oh, because you already had a few sessions before my before with the one with me, right? Yeah, I had a few sessions there about my self love, about um, love is not available to me. It was a lot of about love, love inside of me and love to the others, but a little bit about um, saying no about the boundaries. And when you really called me, I was thinking what is it the most topic that lives inside of me very shortly a day after it was really so present to me in my i have three children houses a lot of staff members and i found myself really feeling about i can't say no i'm always saying yes still i'm saying yes and i have really this belief this feeling inside of my body some stored feeling, feeling hurt, not be able to say no. And I really mm -hmm. wanted to change it. In this moment, we had this reflective practice together. So I really wanted you change this, you transform these stored feelings inside of me in something better so that I can feel alive. I can easily effortlessly say no to the other people, to the staff members, and I really want to say no. May, may, may I put in a few comments on there? So, um, so for people who, for those of you who don't know, uh, an RTT session, this is a hypnotherapy session. So as a client, we come in with a topic as if like it's just like if you go to a psychologist psychiatrist not psychiatrist a psychologist or a psychotherapist you want you have something some some issue it's also called presenting problem that's what we we call it in rtt so there is something which is um which we want to change we want to get rid of something we want to learn how to cope with something right so there is some kind of struggle in our life and we want to deal with it so and what's interesting is, and yeah, and, and then hypnosis is, or, or RTT is, 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 a, is a, that method where we speak about this presenting problem and we go deep inside. We speak actually in hypnosis with the subconscious mind. 
And that's how we can change. And we, first of all, we can find underlying beliefs and we can change them. And what's very, very interesting is it's almost never the actually the actual presenting problem, which is the problem. And as I remember, Bogdana, but correct me if I'm wrong, when you came, you said something about your colleagues with whom you have problems. You weren't even aware of the fact that it's about saying no. As I'm, am I right or am I not correcting? Um, yes, Eric. You're remembering that correctly. I really wanted to say no, but I felt from some reason I can't say no. I will, but I can't. I will, but I can't. This hopelessness, helplessness about this feeling stored in me. And when you really got with me, regressed me back, and I see inside of my body, I felt this feeling, and I see a different scenes from my childhood. And it was the, really the root and the cause. You brought me back, you regressed me back to my childhood, and I could see and understand why I can't say no. And, oh, and so what, what, happens, what, what happened then? So like what RTT, an RTT session is about, we, we, we go back to, 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 to some past scenes. It happened often. They happen to be childhood past scenes, scenes. So scenes from our childhood. They don't have to, right? But then what happens is Marissa says, as a detective, uh, we just look there in our past and we find out the root cause, the actual root cause of the presenting problem. And then what happens? It's actually, I felt as a small girl, I, I, it was just a few scenes in one of them. I felt I really wanted to play with a doll with other girls, but I didn't have any doll. And I was really so not be in the able, in the mood, in the feeling to say no. I just really wanted to play with these girls and couldn't say no. Nothing came out of me. I had no voice. I was a little bit shy and couldn't say it. To the right. next scene was a similar one. I was in the school and I really want to be as all other girls, you know, but felt different not exactly as they. So I really want to have them as a friend. So I still, again, couldn't say no to them. It was the whole line was repeating always the similar route and the cause. I really felt I'm not enough strong to say mm. no. I'm not worthy of the word no. And the fear of losing the friends, the colleagues, and just have this belief and the root. It's better to say yes, so you don't lose anybody. It's better to say yes, not to be ashamed of your authentic answer and say, no, I don't want to do it. You just have this feeling you want to be a part. You want to be, yeah. you, you want to belong. You want to be connected. You want to be loved. You want to be a part of the group. Absolutely of the friends, of the family, of everybody. So you just simply decide to shut down and say no to the most important person in your life. And this is you. This was me and my. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and what happens in hypnosis is also, or in, in, in RTT, um, is we, we change, we find the underlying beliefs. In your case, it was feeling not enough. We change that and we transform right and that's where the magic happens and that's just incredible so in the end we also make a recording right so and that recording it's important to have a recording and it's a very very important to listen to that recording for um well we can say at least 21 days there is uh, there is um science behind that some say it's somewhere between 18 and 66 days statistically uh, that a new habit would develop right so our brain as marissa says learns by repetition and that's why we need to listen to the recording so did you listen to your recording after the session 
Yeah, Eric, it was amazing. I listened to my recording because as you also as a therapist, the recording is a transformation part. The story of the transforming begins with the transformational part. You asked me at the beginning what I really would like to feel how, and how would I like to experience my life? How would felt to say no to others, to be satisfied, to feel free, to feel like wings, you're flying, you know? And when I was listening to this transformational recording, even in the scenes when you were with me, you transformed me during this session. I just really want to add it. We are really, I already felt a transformation and I understood in these scenes why I felt like that. And in the middle of the scenes of the, of the session with you, I felt, oh my God, this is not me. I just believe this was me, this I am. But this is not me. This is not this girl of seven years old, of 15 years old. This is not me. I am actually deeply lovable. I can just easily say no to everybody. But these scenes, let me believe, I can't do it. I'm not able. Everybody is going to go if I say no. So I really decided to shut down my authentic self and store my feelings out of the fear of rejection, out of the fear of losing myself and losing everybody around me. And then Eric came this transformational part. About 15 minutes is a transformation you made for me. I was listening, recording every day, every night before I got to sleep. And what is really impressing is really how your mind is imprinting, is wiring this new belief, beliefs that I felt and these emotions that I felt in the session with you. It was just like, you know, opening and rewiring my mind from a new again. When I was a child, I felt like that. It was an amazing feeling. I felt so free. So free to say no, to set the limit and to say yes to me. But of course, out of love, out of joy, out of abundance that I have and wear inside my body. This really is unbelievable. And that that's like, I, I can't call it otherwise than magic but <laughs> but this work with the subconscious mind is just is just incredible because what happens in in most of the cases is that when a child experiences something um and i'm just saying this with marissa's words an imprint is built and it manifests manifests in the child's mind and that child just thinks that now it was like that and it will always stay like that forever right so when you felt like not deserving of you know be having like being or not deserving to say your actual authentic opinion not deserving to actually say no like or also doubting if you would be able to connect with those other children that's when you when the belief has manifested itself and that's when a child which is absolutely appropriate for the child um, thinks okay this is who I am and this is going to stay like that and for me it's absolutely incredible what happens um, why we are, are actually able to change that for me that is actually magic and I think that's what hypnosis is or makes possible those interruptions this empowerment because you said you feel free and empowered right that's what we give to yeah our clients, freedom and empowerment. Yeah. I found myself in the, the hypnosis. I, I really experienced it like a deeply relaxed state. Mm -hmm. For those who are listening now, the hypnosis, it's not about being asleep. It's about being awakened, totally awakened. Awakened to your best potential, to the best version of yourself. It's an awakening to your authentic self. It's an awakening it awakes you 
to be the best version of yourself awakes you to your best potential. As Marissa says, you awaken your best potential and you are aware of it. As soon as you understand what were your beliefs, why you even believed that until now, you are aware of it, aware of your fears, aware of your sadness, aware who you are, what you feel, what you once felt and why you felt it and why you really store it inside of your soul, inside of your subconscious mind. It's a treasure mind. This is a treasure of all our feelings and all our experiences. This is our emotional mind, the second brain. Marissa said them, the second brain. Here is all your life, all your emotions, everything you really stored it down. So it's really stored here, Eric. And it is a lot of with pain, with hurt to do. Pain, stored emotion, hurt emotion, criticism, everything what we really experience in our life is stored here. So as she says, subconscious mind, feeling mind wins always over the first mind, our cognitive mind. This mind wins always. So we have no chance just to be, to look it down, to find out, to understand what happened with us, to feel these feelings, to process them, to be aware of them, to accept them, and to listen what our feelings are trying to tell us. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And what's also very interesting is you said that you were basically you constantly felt lighter and you felt that you can now set your boundaries. You understand what the root cause was, right? And then you you understood that you now will be easily able to set boundaries. You knew it just right after the session. And that's what's called the basically the instant change. However, it was like for me, it was really important to see does it actually last? Does it stay that feeling after, let's say, two weeks, after one month? I mean, our session was somewhat about one and a half months ago, right? Yes. And, um, and you were, you were saying that, uh, you still, you are still like still there at the same kind of feeling. Yeah, I feel really light. I feel free. I feel relaxed. I feel on ease with setting boundaries. Mm -hmm. And even these small feelings I had at the beginning, oh, how will be, you know, to touch myself, is it still here, you know? Did I still <laughs> feel like that? Is it here? Where did this fear of setting, not be able to say no? But really, just I felt like a newborn, you know? Every day I was just practicing setting my boundaries, not even thinking because I was not anymore. I didn't felt any stored negative emotions anymore. I understood all the last cases and scenes and my old beliefs really blocked me to be this most authentic self in saying no and not fear to lose it. Even so yeah. So, so how how does it feel for you now if somebody from your from your stuff comes to you right so just for those of you who don't know Bogdana is the boss of three children houses is that correct yeah yes you I, have so much stuff yeah sorry couldn't hear I have a lot of staff members and really always feeling I don't want to lose them even if they are good or bad, making a great job or, or, or less a great job, even if they have some issues and topics. Now, when I'm setting boundaries and saying no, I even joy and feel relaxed. I make it out of the joy because it feels easily. I have no blocks anymore. And this is really the RTT formula. It's really long lasting. If you really process these emotions, you cut off these limiting beliefs, there is no root and the cause. There is no actually the reason to believe these old beliefs anymore. So you just go through it without any connection to these store feelings because you're pure, you're, everything is deleted. So you can just move yourself 
and you're comfortable with yourself and you just set the boundary. Even appreciate it more. Well, really now I am joyful, I am satisfied and people who's becoming also a no reaction of me, they really react very positively on it because they have really, really this security and you know, just like feel, okay, this is her limit. She's saying no, so I adapt myself on it. This is the, this is the limit here. And they respect it more. They even, they even want it. This is really amazing, yeah. This is really incredible. Because that, was, that would have been my next question. Like, how, how do people react? Because your fear was their reaction. Reaction to your saying no, to your rejection. You, you were afraid that if you set the boundaries, if you say no, people would just run away. And they just wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't um, do what you expect them to, to do. Because, you know, they're your stuff and you wanted them to do like their job and then you were afraid that they would be like oh my god she's just always saying no she's blah 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 so i will go away but you are saying now no they were actually they, they also were happy they're actually staying because they know the limit they feel the limit and i'm coming from the place of love but still <laughs> saying no and i really let them feel and show them how much i appreciate it, but still saying no to them what not out of any fear it really frees me to be my authentic self and they see and feel how i good i feel about myself so they want it also <laughs> they also get the RPG session they yeah. also do it because it's lasting and they see my progress and to a lot of staff members i already gave the rtt session with oh, the nice. Yeah, which it's it's just really one accomplishment to the another. Um, and a lot of them really I saw their progress in my firm and I'm always um yeah, just looking long lasting results of my staff members. I started in my institution to give the RTT, so I really wanted the best version of my staff members. And I wanted really to help them to uh, achieve their most goals, their, their, their goals, their, their positive energy. And now he's circling this amazing positive energy. But there are, of course, a few staff members also just open and still testing it, um, how this feels. But um, I influence the people about me, uh, around me. To, uh, to feel this energy, to feel this great positive transformation and to want to do it themselves. This is great. And then they feel great. And this is the biggest proof of the RTT4. Absolutely. And this is actually incredible. Like when I hear you speak, I'm thinking, oh my God, there is like as a life coach, I know there is so much coaching involved in changing somebody else's patterns of behavior okay so if somebody wants to learn how to set their boundaries there are quite a few coaching hours which are required to do that because you have to explain how they have to present themselves that they have to the, the person who wants to say no they have to first feel what their boundary is then they have to be able to communicate it clearly easily and um, without a tension, you know, like without feeling bad for the other person when they are saying no, right? So all of that requires so much coaching and none of that is required, really. Hey, Agatha, none of that is really required because if you do an RT session, because, um, because we are going to the actual root cause. Why is actually somebody who wants to say no, who wants to say bound, set boundaries but can't, why are they actually so tense? Why is it actually a problem for them? So you, we don't need to do the coaching to change the, the behavior pattern, right? We need to find out why they did it, why they behave the same, that way, what do they feel actually? then to to change that behavior right and that's what in coaching happens and in rtt we just find out why the person was tense in the first place we eliminate that 
and then no coaching is required anymore. That's just that, that for me as is like magic, really. And I see you now. That's just incredible. Yes, it's fascinating. It's really fascinating how shortly, how quickly. That's why it calls also rapid transformation. Rapid. It, because it goes very, very quickly. Uh, yeah. You're in a deep, relaxed state. You go back. You find. You just don't even need to remember anything because your cognitive mind is really off. Your feeling mind is functioning, and these two minds are connected together. So this wonderful mind find the stored emotions the emotion find the scene and you really like on the television screen like in front of you a big screen you see these scenes they're popping up you just need to look and search for anything it comes out of you itself it's just really the courage to want to know your own truth want to know the root and the cause and want to be aware of it and go through it. As soon as you've done it, you feel amazing. You feel loaded. You feel powerful. You feel delighted and joyful. Abundance of everything. Yeah, it's like a burden has been lifted, right? Yeah. There are also two other types of changes. Um, the gradual change and the retrospective. Bogdana and me, we were, we were giving each other an RTG session. And we were lucky... I feel that our sessions were the last ones. So we had some practice before that and we became much more, much more confident in giving an RTT session each of us, right? So, and um, for the same reason as Bogdana, I wasn't sure what I want to work on because I've been, I've worked in other RTT sessions on, I felt like all my issues I had I've had wonderful RT sessions before where I cried all over the place, all over the session. And I thought, oh my God, so that's been all solved. So I have nothing left. Okay. I have, I'm, I'm fine. Yes. <laughs> and then Bogdana <laughs> came <laughs> and I was like, oh, come on, Bogdana, I really don't know what to talk about. And you were so good. You said, come on, don't worry about it. Just relax. It will come to you. And then really, like, you know, I just had, a, I just after that, like, day or like I had a night after that, after we spoke, um, before the session, I mean. And after that night, I think, like, I asked myself, my mind, my subconscious mind, apparently, what is it that I want to work on? And then my subconscious mind came with uh, with an idea. And that idea was, uh, was like something, okay, it's, this is something, it's not a big deal. Something not really disturbing me much. So it was um, praise. So praise in the sense of, um, I, I felt like I was looking for praise from the outside. I was looking, like I was asking basically my wife, like indirectly to say, oh, you're, a, you're, you're great. You're such a good boy. You're like, you did this wonderfully. You're, you're an amazing husband. So I was like, so, she she does give so many compliments. She's a wonderful, loving wife. But it felt it felt to me often that I'm kind of when I, whenever I'm doing something for the house, for us or something, and I feel like she might not notice that. I was feeling like I have to tell her, I have to show her so that she just tells me, Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that for it, uh, you for that. So basically, yeah, I was looking for praise, either for praise from the outside. And I was like, okay, Bogdana, let's work on that because it's kind of weird. I don't want this. It feels like childish to me to do that every, every time. Yeah. So yeah. then we had, yeah. yeah, go on. Yeah, you were very interested to find out why are you feeling you needed to be praised? What's going on? How this... Where is this feeling from? Where is it is come from? This feeling needed to be praised because I'm doing it good. Why do I need this? I, I remember. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And then uh, I was uh, really, really surprised. And many people are surprised after an RTG session. Uh, surprised by the scenes which came up. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting these exact scenes to come up. And it was really, it, it was... It was an immense experience because 
I wasn't expecting anything big to come up. And then, and what came up were scenes which I remembered consciously. Like, um, it's like when I say it, being in a conscious state of mind with my beta uh, waves <laughs> running through my brain, it still sounds like not a big deal. But when speaking in hypnosis, um, this is completely different because, as you said, I am there. I see that scene. I feel the feeling exactly as it was back then. Yeah. And in my case, it was being eight-year-old, being alone at home and standing in front of a mirror and holding a knife to my chest. I wasn't really about to kill myself, not at all. But I felt so, so alone in, like, I felt just not heard and not understood. And that felt so bad that I just wanted, I felt like I wanted to stop my life. I just didn't see yeah. what, like, what's the point in staying alive. And again, I was, I had no intention to kill myself, but it hurt so much. And it was just incredible to, to see that, that that scene would come up with the presenting problem of like needing to be praised, come on, huh? <laughs> it was very much connected, Eric. It was so connected to your self-value, to your personality, to, to being lovable so as you are. And you just really wanted to feel so lovable and accepted as you are in your wish to be like you want to be, to be who you want to be. And in front of this mirror in your scene, you already exactly knew it, who do you want to be? But there were yeah. feelings there. And you were in the world of feelings, not in the world of logic. That's why you are telling us, I didn't really want to kill myself, but it was so bad. I felt so bad that really there is no aim to live anymore if I can't be who I am. And connection to your praise, you really wanted to be praised, to be, to be really praised about on your whole person, on your whole identity, on your whole work to feel enough of everything. And I remember it was amazing to have this aha moment uh, in the session and to experience really how it felt for you with all these stored emotions, as you say, in alpha down, you felt it was yesterday. And yes, I felt with you. I was really just like sad and almost with you there uh, in the same feeling. Even if I was a therapist and you were a client in this case, it was amazing, really, an amazing processing in, uh, emotion that you have and you free yourself out of this blocking emotion you stored there somewhere in the part of your body. It was... <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I'm so, so grateful for guiding me there. It was just, um, you know, it was just amazing to see how the praise which I was looking for now as a 39 years old grown up man, uh, it was actually the child, the little, yeah. the little child in me who just felt that he was not seen, he was not understood and that he didn't have the voice. Yeah, I, I just heard uh, from you. I didn't felt loved. I, I didn't feel enough. I didn't felt, you just correct me, please, if I'm wrong somewhere, felt I can be who I am. I'm enough loved. I really don't need this phrase. But today, somehow, as an adult, I need it. Well, it, it, what, what it felt like, it was like, even though my parents gave me a lot of love, yeah. I didn't feel that they love me. It felt like they loved somebody they see in me, but not me. That's that's a bit uh, that's a bit uh, complicated. It's it's a very complicated actually feeling for the child to to understand. Yeah, because Eric, we live the children as we know as we learn in RTT lived in the world of emotions. If the dad is not here on the concert. If the dad not here, that just means that he don't love me. 
If my dad would love me, he would be here with me. If somebody says us, oh, you, you're such a kind, beautiful, loving guy, you just clean your room. But if we really don't, they don't touch us, they don't show us this love and mm -hmm. confirm our emotions, how we feel about ourselves and say and recognize in us who we are, give us this permission to be who we are, that we really believe as a children, as every child would believe. But everything is okay with me, they would accept me. Something wrong yeah. with me, otherwise they would, they would love me. And this is the emotional world of the children. Once upon time we were and really experienced this. Yeah, and the thing is that, that as adults, if we, if we, if we don't cope or we, if we don't um, work with, with that, what happened back then, we just carry it through our whole lives, right? Yeah. And then we just act as if we're still those eight-year-old, five-year-old, three-year-old children. That's just incredible. And, and, and that is the incredible power of RTT, which can free us, which does free us so brilliantly, even in one session. It's just incredible. And I actually, well, actually also wanted to add that that change um, it can happen instantly, but sometimes it doesn't. For me, it felt, I felt really good after the session, free and light, as in, like, I, I just understood. The understanding gave me a kind of lightness. But I couldn't feel, I couldn't know if I will actually be free of that need to have praise afterwards. That's why I couldn't answer you. You were asking me several days later, so how yep. are you? How are you? How are you feeling? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to yep. say anything because I just don't know. And then now, after the longer time, I just feel, actually, there have been several situations and occasions where I did something for the household, let's say. Yeah. And I was asking myself, huh, now this is the situation. Do I want to tell my wife? Do I want to have praise from her? And yeah. I'm, like, I'm wondering why I'm asking that myself anymore. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I didn't, not only did I not want praise, I think, I also was wondering why was it that I wanted to know if I wanted praise, if you know what I mean. Yes, and this is exactly this, the, the point. This is the aha, this is the light bulb point, awakening moment. I'm questioning the belief that I really mm -hmm. praise. As Marisa says, as soon as we question belief, we don't believe actually anymore. Yeah. And this is the great, Eric, and I see your process. You're in the process, and this is exactly what you already said. Some people need a time, it's a process. Some, in some cases, process go over three months, really, than the people having a half a weight of a body. They were overweighted, and they are really half of it, but they are listening, recording a few times of a day, always before they go to sleep, they're really committed, committed to their transformation. And transformation and recording part, as we've said before, is the most empowering and transforming, deeply transforming power. Because in, when we sleep, our subconscious mind is still listening. So no matter if we sleep and we are listening, recording, our subconscious mind is always listening. So rewire it and reprogram it to the new beliefs that we really decided to work on. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, I think actually if we sleep deeply, like really deeply, maybe a recording, if we listen to it, might not be like completely heard and understood by our mind if we're yeah. really like in a deep sleep mo uh, um, um, phase of the sleep. But when we are listening to just before going to sleep or just on the, in the, at the onset of sleep, yeah. um, then we definitely hear and, and understand everything, especially interestingly, um, I, I realized several times now that if I listen to such a recording and fall asleep, then I always wake up 
when it says, open up your eyes. And that is the proof that I was hearing every word. I just wasn't aware. Yeah, it's exactly that. Really, really. Mm -hmm. I really experience it in the sleep. And I always wake up freshly, always with a great energy. So I, how I feel really, that's, that is my subconscious mind working on and still listening. Like a patient's in the coma also. They're really listening. They're in coma, but the subconscious mind is always working. Yeah. And I feel energized. I feel powerful in a good energy. Um, always after listening to the recording. That's wonderful. That's really wonderful. So thank you so much, Bogdana, for sharing this stream with me, for sharing this story, your story, and for being my reflective partner, of course. And thank you, Eric. It was a really amazing transformational journey. Um, in our last issues, I think now we're really, really uh, on the way in our process. But we, um, I learned a lot from you. And I'm thank you. Thank you really for this experience. And thank you. Uh, we make this um, live stream together. And I hope for everybody who listened now here to became these wings and to choose the, the RTT, to choose the formula of success. This is a great journey of empowering yourself and be your best version of yourself. I believe so too. I mean, I've tried so many different things. I've been on uh, uh, with, at, at the, um, with the psychotherapist for about two years. Um, and I know how it is, how the psychotherapists work, how they work. I mean, they're different, of course, but this is called also talk therapy. And as a life coach, I also see how life coaching works but then now having experienced this uh, R how rtt works myself and not only from listening what others say i i i really believe that rapid change is actually possible although i was a not believer of fixed changes and uh, this is just amazing and next uh, wednesday uh, we will have the honor to have marissa peer herself her Majesty, <laughs> I just want to say, because she is the creator of this. And although the maybe the tools themselves, which are used in RTT, um, they may be not like absolutely new, but the way she put them together and just and that that is hypnotherapy, all of that and how fast this works, that is just genius. I I believe and. Next Wednesday, we have the honor to hear her, her herself speak about it. I will ask her questions. I've prepared some questions. And if any of you in the audience, when you listen to this um, on YouTube on Tuesday, this will be up. Or maybe I will put it up now so that more people can watch. If you have any questions, just pop them down in the, in the comment section below. And I will ask them if I have um, the opportunity and... And I think this is going to be amazing. Yeah, just to add it, just look this this amazing stream of Eric and Marissa Peer next, next Wednesday. Just look at it, just deep dive in it. It's amazing power, it's incredible power of the transformation, long lasting. Uh, you just win and gain all these great experiences, all this knowledge as Marissa sharing with you. You can ask the question, to Eric, to the Marissa, join to this wonderful transformational live stream. Yeah. Thank you very much, Bogdana. Thank you for your time. And let's just stay in touch and have a good evening. You too. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.